You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Yoram Edinger. Yoram Edinger had served at the Israeli Embassy in Washington with the rank of, with the rank of an ambassador in charge of Israel's congressional relations. Right now, he's the executive director of Second Thought, which is an Israeli-American initiative aimed at generating second thoughts about conventional wisdom. Yoram, I'd like to welcome you to the show and ask you what second thoughts you have today. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, second thought for today is uh, designed to uh, refute conventional wisdom, which suggests that uh, Israel's economy has been uh, mostly or substantially impacted by terrorism and uh, problems in the peace process, while in fact a second thought would reveal that Israel's economy has been impacted largely, substantially, almost entirely by pure economic forces. It's not the issues, for example, people talk about boycotts all the time, and if Israel was properly boycotted, uh, wouldn't that have a, a real negative effect on us? Well, you know, anybody who talks about uh, uh, Israel isolated, Israel uh, boycotted, uh, should uh, open wide eyes and realize that uh, uh, as we are uh, talking, uh, in fact, the rising powers of a global economy, China and especially India, are courting uh, Israel and have become chief trading partners of uh, Israel. Uh, Israeli export is booming in defiance of global economic uh, turmoil. Uh, Europe uh, has recently appointed the Israelis to head uh, European high technology commissions. In fact, China is currently lobbying Israel uh, in order to uh, get future natural gas exported exclusively, they want it, to China. Uh, uh, Europe and the former USSR and Third World are seeking uh, cooperation with Israel's medical, agricultural, scientific, technological uh, sectors, uh, let alone uh, Israel's uh, defense industries, uh, which uh, features us as the fourth, fifth largest defense exporter in the in the world. The bottom line, the bottom line is that while people are talking about uh, boycotting and isolating Israel, uh, overseas investors are literally flooding uh, Israel, which uh, paints us in a very, very different and much positive manner. So the, the boycott people, are, is that more of a fringe? I mean, we see the academic boycott as well as the economic boycott. Are they, are they just few and far between but very noisy? I, I would suggest to differentiate, as we do in our daily life, between talking the talk and walking the walk. Uh, gone are the days where people were doing Israel favor by establishing some trade relationship. Uh, today, Israel prides itself in developing uh, export, which is uh, uh, export with unique niches. Uh, those are the unique uh, telecommunications, medical, pharmaceutical, uh, health, uh, green, energy, energy alternative, water niches, which are essential for every single uh, free society in the world uh, today. Uh, people uh, sometimes do talk the talk in order to appease uh, the Arab bloc, but behind that uh, harsh talk, there is much, much more sweeter walk when it comes to Israel. Let me touch on something you mentioned a minute ago about the natural gas finds that we had off our coast. Uh, there are really two issues that come to mind. One of them is the fact that now Lebanon is making a claim on that gas. And secondly, the find actually happened many years ago. And to this 
moment, I still haven't seen any change in my day-to-day -day life living here in Israel. Where is this gas, and when are we going to get it? Well, uh, the findings uh, have been uh, pretty recent. Uh, the actual uh, exploration, the actual uh, flow of natural gas to Israel's economy, and more importantly, uh, all over the world through uh, exportations by Israel, probably will start in about a year and a half to uh, two years. In fact, we are talking today about the possibility of Israel exporting natural gas to uh, Egypt, which is a major exporter of uh, petroleum to Israel today. Oh, so the tides are turning. And what about the, the Lebanese claim now on this gas that we found? Well, uh, this is not the first uh, refuted claim made by, uh, by Arabs. Uh, the case has been decided by the international courts. In fact, we have another neighbor, Cyprus, which uh, shares exactly, but exactly the same position of, uh, by, held by Israel as far as, far as uh, uh, sovereignty over uh, those uh, wells. Uh, I would not uh, lose any sleep over that Lebanese claim. Okay, we are talking to Yoram Edinger, who served at the Israeli embassy in Washington with the rank of an ambassador in charge of Israel's congressional relations. Uh, he's also in sh the executive director of Second Thought, which, as the name suggests, raises a second thought to things that we have often thought to be a given. And it's very interesting to hear that there always is a another way of viewing things. So let me ask you about another topic that comes up quite a bit. Uh, Many people say that Israel should try to consider getting along without American aid, the billions of dollars in aid that we get. A, do you think that's reasonable? And B, is it possible? Well, uh, I had a role to play, and I would say even a significant role to play, in the decision made in 1996 by then uh, first-term Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to wean ourselves uh, to rid Israel of dependency upon non-military U.S. foreign aid. It was uh, severely criticized by many uh, Israeli economists and uh, bureaucrats. It uh, became a reality. And the fact is that not only uh, does the sun rise over Israel, uh, but the fact is that the Israeli economy has taken off dramatically since that decision, and U.S.-Israel relations have improved uh, substantially. In my mind, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu should, uh, should uh, aim at ridding Israel of the $3 billion uh, annual military uh, aid, uh, but not in a, sim in a simple manner. Uh, he should propose to do it by uh, transforming uh, foreign aid over 10 years, over 10 years, uh, into a number of bilateral U.S.-Israel foundations. For instance, uh, first year, 10% of the $3 billion should be transformed into a bilateral uh, defense industrial foundation, which would leverage U.S. and Israeli competitive edge uh, thereby creating a win-win uh, defense industrial alliance, generating more jobs in America, more research and development in America, more exports to America, as well as as well as in uh, in Israel. Uh, second year, 10% should be rededicated to energy alternative industries, and the third year to water energy, to water uh, technologies, namely to transform aid into trade, which is much healthier, especially for the recipient uh, country, uh, let alone that uh, U.S. Uh, military aid has had a uh, huge cost burdening the Israeli economy. For instance, we have been um, prohibited from exporting uh, our defense uh, products to certain countries because of uh, American uh, policy. Uh, we had 
to confine ourselves to certain American products, even if there are better products uh, in other parts of the world or in America uh, itself. Uh, dependency on uh, U.S. military aid, strangely enough, has forced some uh, Israeli defense contractors to relocate their facilities to America because we uh, have more and more dollars at our disposal, but less and less shekels, and therefore Israeli contractors found it easier to sell to the Israeli Defense Ministry from the U.S. than from, uh, from Israel. The bottom line, again, uh, Israel winning itself of U.S. foreign aid would do a great service to Israel itself and to the bilateral relations between U.S. and Israel. And just to clarify, the term that you keep referring to is military aid, meaning that none of this money is earmarked or is meant to be used for anything else? No, no. A $3 billion annual uh, U.S. military aid is designed, first and foremost, 75 Five percent of it designed to purchase uh, U.S. Israel defense in the defense products, which basically means it's a subsidy to the U.S. own defense industry through the Israeli uh, venue, and 25 percent uh, are spent in Israel mostly for research and development. Okay. We have been talking to Yoram Edinger, who was formerly with the Israeli embassy in Washington. He had the rank of an ambassador there, and now he's the executive director of Second Thought. Yoram, we're just about out of time, but could you please tell people, how can they learn more about the work that you're doing? Well, uh, first of all, through the website, uh, which is www, and in one word, the Ettinger Report, Ettinger with two T's, dot com www.theettingerreport.com Secondly, I'm on Facebook and uh, Twitter as well. Okay, your manager, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com the Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to Doug at Profile-Financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.